بالقرآن سديدا أحرف عربي مفيدة بالقرآن سديدا أحرف عربي مفيدة بالقرآن سديدا وبها أقرأ قرآني وبها أقرأ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلوات الله وسلامه على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We start in the name of Allah the compassion of the merciful all praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad his family and his followers all until the day of resurrection. We are still with the stories of the glorious Quran and we have reached now into the story of Musa or Moses, peace be upon him. He's Moses ibn Imran. Musa ibn Imran, he's um, one of the, he's the famous prophet of Bani Israel, the children of Israel. And Moses, of course, is a very famous prophet. He was mentioned in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. And when we talk about his own story, it's very interesting. Now, the story uh, is not about uh, the life of Musa, uh, because he was mentioned so much in the glorious Quran, in so many different places and in different contexts. This time, we are dealing with his story with his own young boy who actually uh, went with him but then met the very famous Al-Khidr, um, a man who was righteous and Allah has given him knowledge. And there are so many things to learn from that particular story. Let us read of what the Quran says in Surah Al-Kahf, which is uh, chapter number 18, verses uh, number 60 to 74, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهِ لَا أَبْرَحُ حَتَّى أَبْلُغَ مَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُبًا He said to his own um, boy servant, he said, I will not pass until I find the junction of the two seas or I will be traveling for years and years. Because Allah told him, and this interesting story is told us in the hadith, because as you know, we support what is in the glorious Quran with what is in the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and vice versa, because they all came from the same source, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who either told uh, the story in his own uh, book, uh, glory be to him, or he told it through the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, the story in the hadith is like this. Now. Musa was given so much knowledge by the grace of Allah. And he said to uh, himself, there is no one who's more knowledgeable than me. I have so much great knowledge. And Allah wanted to teach him a lesson. And Allah said, well, there's someone who is more knowledgeable than you are. He said, where is he? I need to see him and reach him and learn from him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to go and to find the junction of the two seas, Majma'ul Bahrain. And there he will find uh, the man, the righteous man who will teach him um, something of the knowledge that he was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He moved with his own boy, and according to the reports, it was Yusha ibn Nun, again, another righteous boy who was serving Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, may Allah's peace be upon him, and they went on. And until they reached that place where they sat at the uh, junction of the two seas, um, they actually were very tired because of traveling, and they um, kept their own fish because one of the signs is that um, 
Allah has given Musa is that uh, keep a fish with you in your own basket and the fish, wherever you lose the fish, the fish, that is the place where you find the righteous man. Now they came and they were so much tired and they actually found a rock and they slept um, uh, around the rock and they put themselves against the rock because they, they were so tired. And um, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, uh, made it so that um, when they were asleep, the fish, you know, vigorously jumped around um, and just got itself out of the basket, you know, went through the sea, creating like, like subhanAllah, like a channel inside the sea or tunnel. And um, when they woke up, you know, they continued on forward and they got into another point in that journey. And then he said, uh, Musa said to his own boy servant, give us our food. We feel very hungry. He said, um, yeah, that's right. But then the fish, which was their own food, got out of the basket. And I forget to tell you that uh, this is what happened because they were so tired and they just kept on marching. And he said, well, you did not tell me. Um, well, he said, when we were at the rock, I forgot the fish and it was only the shaitan that really made me forget to remember. Yes, shaitan really creeps in the mind and soul of a person and whispers into his own um, ear and to his own heart. So he would forget as they forgot because of uh, shaitan or the Satan did not allow them to. You know, he, he actually went back and he said, this is exactly, my boy, what we want. We want to go back to the same place because this is what we have been seeking. And they went back on the same track and the same route which the fish actually created for them. Look, look all these are signs by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they follow the same track until finally they reach the same rock and the same place and then there they found this man a man that was pious and Allah has given knowledge and Al-Khidr um, of course uh, had some discussion about his personality among the interpreters of the glorious Quran whether he was a prophet or was just only um, a mere righteous person but it seems like he was a man that was given a knowledge and in fact this is what most of the um, interpreters of the Quran, the Mufassireen, will tell you that he was just an ordinary person who was actually uh, given some knowledge in order to teach a prophet like Musa alayhi salam. And in fact he said, well Musa you have some knowledge that I don't know and I have some knowledge that you don't know and uh, of course Allah has given me something and Musa of course because he was after this after um, this man trying to learn from him and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and humbling himself even if he's a prophet he would learn he would have to learn from an ordinary person well he said do I follow you so that you can teach me from what you have learned some guidance guidance from Allah هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا well he said, there will be some signs because he was given this, this knowledge and he said, well, you will not be able to be patient as you see certain things. And, and he knew that Musa alayhi salam, well, some of his qualities actually was, you know, everyone has his own, um, you know, particular attributes and sometimes uh, points of weakness. And Musa alayhi salam was only a human being. Yes, all the prophets were just normal human beings and they were given the message chosen by Allah. Then of course disciplined um, to carry the message in their own uh, you know, preparation as the prophet, our prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, Rabbi fa ahsana ta'dibi. The prophet even 
um, taught me and uh, got me through discipline and he made my discipline the best. As he went along with uh, the uh, Al-Khidr alayhi salam, he said, you will not be able to be patient with what I have for you because you don't have a knowledge of it. He said, well, you'll find me by the grace of Allah, insha'Allah, a patient person and I will not disobey anything from you. Of course, the story will continue, but we need to have a break and we'll continue with this very interesting story. Please. Stay with us. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Continuing with the story of Musa ibn Imran, the prophet of the children of Israel. May Allah's peace be upon him. As he was given the knowledge but then was told by Allah to go and seek some knowledge from a righteous ordinary person. This person was Al-Khidr alayhi salam and as Musa alayhi salam asked him uh, that he will accompany him to learn from him, he said you will not be able to be patient but he said well I will not by the grace of Allah inshallah I will not disobey any matter for you and he said well look if you follow me do not ask me any question until I tell you about it. I will give you a mention of it. But then in time, he said, well, in between us, and they agreed. Now, the story continues. As they go, and they went on, they wanted to travel together, and the people who were in a ship knew uh, Al-Khidr. He asked them if they can um, get along and, and be part of this journey. He said, yes, welcome. And they took them even free of charge. He and Musa, uh, peace be upon him, they rode in that ship and they went along, you know, surfing in the sea. And during the travel inside the sea, Al-Khidr, you know, starting making a hole uh, towards the sea on the bottom um, or he, he made a hole for some means the Quran did, did not tell us exactly but he said you know, according to the glorious Quran kharaqaha. he said hatta ida rakiba kharaqaha. he made a hole in it and Musa was so much surprised he said well did you put a hole in this ship in order to drown it's people, what have you done? Well, he said, didn't I tell you that you will not be able to be patient and you will not withstand and wait until I tell you? Well, now Musa, peace be upon him, realized that he made a mistake and he said, well, pardon me because I forgot. And please, don't make it hard on me and he was of course forgiven for him and they continued on as they were moving he found a boy and he immediately killed that boy by a means that was possible at his own time and Musa was again surprised what is happening he found an innocent boy with you know no crime and even was a very young and he killed him and he got so much mad and he said well aqatalta nafsan zakiyatan bighayr nafs you killed one uh, you know pure soul which is you know which had committed no crime without even you know he committed that crime or killed another person you really had uh, done uh, something you have done a miserable and evil and dreadful act he said well didn't I tell you that you will not be able to withstand what I was telling you you were not patient and now you're coming into that 
same old objection to what I've been saying. Well, he said, I know myself now. Prophet Musa السلام, said, I know that if I would ask you anything after this, of course, now I think this is going to be the parting between me and you because I think it was enough for me to make two mistakes in a row and it's your right that um, you have an excuse now that you can leave me and abandon me. Well, he again was silent and he kept on going. And then two incidents happened and he did not know why, but he said, well, it will be time to tell you. Just don't be in a hurry. Let's wait and see and learn from a knowledge that you didn't have. They kept on marching. On Talaqa, they continued on that journey. Until they reached, they were very hungry, they reached a town, and they were very much in need of food and shelter. And they asked the people there to feed them. They asked for food, which is fine. I mean, if you're really very hungry and nothing around, even, even someone like a prophet or righteous man, they would ask for food. And these people rejected giving them food. You know, even they were very stingy and very bad that even someone who's a wayfarer, who's on the road, lost and tired and hungry, and no one was there to feed him. And these are two people. Well, he kept on going. He found um, a wall that was about to fall. Yuridu ayyankat. Well, he, you know, the khidr, brought it back again, erected that wall and strengthened that wall so it would not fall. It's interesting. Well, these are people who did not feed us, who did not greet us, who did not receive us. They did not treat us as guests when they are supposed to. If you see a wayfarer, someone who's really um, desperate for food and shelter and warmth, you should give him that. That's part of the human nature that we are supposed to, to have for people like that. And all of this was not given. And yet, Al-Khidr was kind enough to erect a wall that belongs to the people of this town. And he said, well, you could have taken some money. He just made it free for their own. He did not ask for anything. He said, well, you could have uh, built that so maybe there will be you know, some money out of this, and we could buy food with it, rather than these people would give us, لو شئت لاتخذت عليه أجرا, you know, food or, uh, or money, whatever, anything that we could uh, get along with. Well, he said, according to our agreement, O oh Moses, this is the parting between me and you. هذا فراق بيني وبينك. Now, he will tell him what happened. He said, سأنبئك بتأويل ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا. Now I'll tell you exactly about things that you were not able to withhold and to understand and to be patient about. He said, look, what I did with, with the ship is that it was belonging to some poor people who were working in the sea. لمساكين يعملون في البحر. And there was a tyrant king who was putting his hand by force and getting any ship that is valid and good. And I wanted to create a hole in it so it will be a permanent defect. So this king and, and his own soldiers and, and the people who were working with him, they would see this ship and they would just leave it along, um, you know, for these, own, these poor people. SubhanAllah, now look at the wisdom. Of course, it's not going to be uh, uh, something that is too harmful. But he, again, they did it. And then, what about the story of the boy? Well, the boy actually was uh, a son of two uh, believing mother and father. And he was about, he was going to, by the knowledge of Allah, he was going to let them astray and take them out of the realm of faith and submission to Allah into rejection and kufr. And he said, well... Allah will give them someone better than that. He will substitute that boy with something who is even better than him, and he would be even closer to mercy, 
because this boy did not have a mercy because as he was about to grow up and to become a full-fledged man with power, he was going to let these um, two parents uh, astray. Now the wall was belonging to two orphans who were very much in need of a treasure that was left under that wall by their own righteous father. And he wanted them to grow up. And had that wall fallen into the ground, it would be uncovered and people would get this treasure and take it away from the two boys who were very much in need of it. They were orphans and no one was going to give them anything to grow up with. And it was the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get this treasure out, out of his own mercy and kindness to these two boys. That's why he put that wall back again to serve this purpose. And of course, it was not done by my own. Look what this knowledgeable and righteous person was saying. He was attributing this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, no one would, would do this without a knowledge. How would you know? that this was the case unless you are a righteous person like that, especially killing um, this innocent boy, seemingly innocent, but he was about to commit that crime against his own parents. And, and that's why Allah substituted him with someone who, was, who would be kind to the parents. First, this story of the ship that was owned by these poor people and it was a source of their own living and yet this tyrant king was putting his hand by force over anything that would be possible to take and this righteous man Al-Khidr uh, made it defective so that it will stay as a source of living for these poor people. And the second uh, benefit that we, we learned and understand the reason why he did what he did is killing that boy who was really going to be real source of taking his parents because out of their own love and compassion to him taking him from taking both of them from uh, iman into kufr and rejection of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this was was really uh, something terrible and allah substituted him with another one who was closer in mercy who was very kind and who kept uh, giving them the right um, and, and being kind to them. And of course, the last thing is um, this wall that was about to fall and the treasure was left under that wall so that these poor uh, orphans would find something to live by and to take the treasure that was left to them by their own righteous father. You know, these are things that are important. Now, what about the Khidr who lived uh, through that and taught um, this great uh, prophet of Allah, Musa, may Allah's peace uh, be upon him. Well, he actually died because no one would be kept alive um, until the Day of Judgment. Everyone, um, except of course, Isa alayhi salam, who was lift up uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this tells us some great lessons and wisdoms that we find in the glorious Quran. Obviously, there are many things to learn, but since we're coming to the end of our episode today, I'd like to leave you with this, and we will be more, inshallah, with stories from the glorious Quran. Until I see you, I ask Allah to keep you on the straight path. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.